Hi, Joey. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So, I are, are you like uh, calling from home now or chilling yeah. somewhere? <laughs> yeah, as you can see, uh, my background, my comfortable bed. So, that's where I'll be crashing after this talk, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Just one step uh, away. Yeah, just one step yeah. away. Very tempted. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, without further ado, hello again to everyone and welcome to the Google Developer Space channel. Thank you for tuning in to the live stream today. So just a reminder for everyone, please make full use of the live chat and the Facebook comment if you have any questions for the speakers. And before we begin, I'd just like to briefly introduce what we do and who we are. So Google Developer Space is a platform for developers and startups from around the region to learn, connect, engage, and be inspired. And as part of the DevRel team, we aim to empower and connect the community to our people, program, network, and technology be it online today with Data Science SG or in person. And today we're very excited to be hosting Data Science Singapore Meetup. And I'd like to pass the stage to Rizal to do some introduction and kickstart the event. All right, thank you very much, Joey. Yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Rizal. So uh, I'm an AI engineer at AI Singapore, but today I'm representing uh, Data Science SG you know, as the host. Um, today, we'll be having, um, you know, uh, a good friend of ours, Tuya Cho, who will be presenting about, you know, pricing um, video games items using data science methods. Uh, but yeah, uh, but I think just before we, we, we have Tuya Cho come in, all right, I think I would like to say some things about uh, Data Science SG, all right, what we are in case I think we might have, we just, just a few days ago, we, we have quite a number of Numbers coming in. So, Data Science SG, we're basically a com local community who brings together, you know, data science practitioners, you know, AI engineers, or uh, those who want to be in the field. Basically, people from, you know, all, all walks of life, you know, to come and learn together with us. So, that's why we have such events yeah. here. And I really want to chime in that, you know, it's one of the biggest local communities here, <laughs> in case, you know, Raza is being humble or what. Yeah, I'll bring that <laughs> out. Uh, Hear that cool? Hear that cool? <laughs> just, just giving, <laughs> oh, just shout out to cool. Yeah, just giving a shout out to uh, to my boss. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So shall we have? Uh, shall we bring to to you in? Yeah, no problem. I'll leave it to you to bring him out. So yeah. All right. All right. See you later, Joey. See you. Hi, Raizo. Hey, hi to ya. Hi, right. long time no see. Long time no see. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. been quite some time since we've seen each other. Yep, yep. Yeah, so um, yeah, um, I'm excited to, to, to hear what you have to present to the, to the audience today. Uh, we have about 40 people now, all right? That's, wow. Yeah, Good that's crowd. quite an audience for a live stream event. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because we are used to uh, physical meetups. Yeah, actually, if it's going to meet up, there's a lot more people. But hopefully, I don't disappoint all the audiences coming in. No, no, I'm sure you won't. I think, I think especially today, it will be an interesting uh, topic because it's something that's not, um, how to say, it, it's not very strongly tied into uh, a, a company use case, but rather it's something that's more, you know, uh, more relevant for people who, you know, have side projects, side, side, side interests. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's basically like uh, the things that I I I try to apply that things. So, so uh, I'm not a data science practitioner myself. Uh, I'm a machine learning engineer, but uh, I I want to get into data science. I want to learn more about data science and whatever the things that I learn from data science courses, data science methods, or or even attend to the local media like this one, and I try to apply it to the the things that I'm doing. For example, if I play games, I say. Uh, how do I use um, you know data science method to price something that is uh, as trivial as games item, right? Uh, so along the way, uh, I I learn new things. You know, I learn things that are I learn I, I face difficulties. I learn things that are not you know suited for for using this kind of method. But you know, uh, hopefully, I can share all the things that I learn and audiences get uh, some useful information out of it. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So so I'm I'm looking forward to whatever you have to dish out. Uh, so. Currently, you are a machine learning engineer at Any Digital, um, yep. and and even even though you are currently a machine learning engineer, you you, you know you are in the scene already. 
um, you you are you, basically you are you, you have said that you are still learning a lot of things, and yeah. that's why you are doing all these side projects. And I think that will be relevant for uh, people who are trying to get the, into data science themselves, like yourself. But I guess they do not know where to start. So I have uh, I'm guessing that you know through, through your presentation, you might be able to give uh, some inspiration to those you know who are trying to get into the scene. Yes, yes. I think these are uh, presentations aim to help people who are in transition or in like do I want to get into data science. But sort of, you know, I started a course, but I don't know where do I go from there sort of things. You know, like I set up maybe Andrew and course on Coursera, but how, where do I go from there? Or I, I started this uh, project as a school project, right? Maybe six months uh, internship. Where do I go from there? So I think this slides help these kind of uh, people with that kind of profile. Uh, less so for the people who are more experienced, you know, become a senior data scientist or, you know, uh, lead data scientist. Uh, maybe not so much apl applicable for them, but this is more of like a junior or intermediate level. Awesome, awesome. All right, uh, well, enough of me uh, talking over here. I'll hand it over to you, all right? So- yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, see you in a bit. See you. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Duya Jio. So I'm a machine learning engineer, engineer at NTUC Enterprise. So if you don't know where's uh, NE Digital, it's actually NTUC. They know, you are very familiar about NTUC FairPrice. We are like a tech wings for the NTUC, the whole NTUC, NTUC FairPrice, NTUC incomes, etc. So today I will be going through, you know, how do you price games item using data science method? And uh, this is what I do as a part like part time, I would say like a pet, pet projects. So I, I try to learn data science stuff, maybe from online, maybe from people, and I try to apply those methods that I gathered into the you know this kind of pricing game items. So uh, this will be free and easy. If you have any questions, feel free to type out in the comments, and uh, I will try to answer as best as I can. So without further ado, let's get into this talk, right? So uh, disclaimer: this. Slides are more infrastructure and process oriented, so there will be no fancy algorithms like uh, GANs or you know uh, uh, bugs or any other NLP or computer vision stuff. This is more for uh, entry level sort of infrastructure. What kind of process should I go through, and you know uh, how do I start and end the data science project as a beginner level? So if if you are looking into getting to know more fancy algorithms. Uh, I think this is not a slide for you, so you know you you might be disappointed in in this. So yeah, hopefully I can I can uh, share with you what uh, other uh, I can share with you the important things of or maybe useful things in any other any other way. Maybe not from the fancy algorithm. So this will be my table of contents. So I will start with my backstory. How did I chance upon this? You know my personal project and also what are the methods that I do it. So uh, I have this personality of doing things right because I have a little bit of OCD in if you if you say so to do the things right and you know uh, follow the correct practice so that I don't sidetrack and uh, after that you know after I apply all the methods uh, there are findings or there are there are things that or there are difficulty that I have faced along the way I will talk to you guys about it and also the future plan you know where do I go from here after I have done this uh, what, what's next for this particular project so uh, yeah, let's start with the backstory. So this is my background, right? I uh, graduated from University of Glasgow Computer Science, uh, pretty much doing developer stuff, you know, uh, building mobile app, web app, etc., whatnot. And also, I after that I went to Avenar as a analyst. So over there, I do mainly like process automation. You know, uh, how do you digitize something? How do you automate the certain workflow? And after a while, I uh, because I, I'm interested to learn more about AI and uh, machine learning in general. So I hop on to this AI apprenticeship, apprenticeship program from AI Singapore. So if you don't know, there's an apprenticeship program hosted by AI Singapore. It's a nine months long uh, machine learning or AI journey that you have to go through. And uh, they will ask you to learn stuff. They will ask you to work on the real life project that, you know, uh, you don't really face it outside. Let's say you go for a course, it might not give you a real life company project, but AI Singapore Apprenticeship Program does. And uh, you get a lot of experience from the peers who are like-minded people like you to learn more about it. So after that, I graduated from there and I'm currently working as a machine learning engineer at NE Digital. 
uh, for, for over one half years. So yeah, so uh, how do I change upon this, right? So recently, if you notice uh, there's a COVID virus going around and everybody is forced to stay at home. And uh, yeah, without exception, all the IT personnel have to work from home. And yeah, because of that, there's a lot of free uh, uh, free time that come out from, you know, with not, not traveling, uh, not meeting your friends for lunch, you know, meet, your lunch breaks are shorter and et cetera. So I have some free time so that, you know, I, I can do some uh, leisure stuff by start playing this game called uh, Path of Exile. So this Path of Exile is a uh, action RPG game. So if you are not sure about what's action RPG, it's in more like you build up a character from uh, level zero or level one, all the way to a very strong character, right? You you equip yourself with the item, you level up, you try to kill monster, get more loot, right? You you buy and trade with other players. To it's basically it's like a uh, it's like a real life actually. Like you, you try to gain knowledge from you know learning stuff. You you try to work to get more more money. You try to build your family, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is more like a progressive level sort of game. So I, I started playing this, and uh, so this is how the graphics looks like. So you are a character. You control a character. You try to kill a monster, and you get some loot from there. So after you kill something, and you will get something out of it, right? So there's a lot of uh, equipments. Uh, a currency, etc. So what's so strange about this game is that uh, there's no money involved. I mean, like there's no uh, gold or there's no coin per se, right? So uh, as a as a player, you will have equipped like weapons. You have shield, right? Uh, you have helmet. You have armor. You have glove. You have belt and uh, your booth. And also you have rings and amulets. And also you have a uh, health and mana potion. So uh, there's no money involved, right? So how does this uh, whole thing work is that they have something called currency. So currency items are something like this, right? So these items are actually used to trade with other players. So it is, it's much like uh, back in the day where human used to trade, you know, bronze with food, uh, gold with houses, etc. Instead of using uh, plain old cash. Per se, right? So these are the items that is being used to trade among the players to get better items. And you cannot buy a uh, good item from shops because shops only sell very low level items or not very good item per se. So the only way you can improve yourself or you, the only way you can make your character stronger is to either use this uh, currency to craft uh, uh, something nice for yourself, or you use that currency to buy a uh, crafter item from a customer, or you can game also that you can also game this item from uh, by killing monster. So the chance of getting you know very good item from killing monster is slimmer than buying it. So people start to buy uh, instead of farming. So but sorry, some people still buy. Uh, yeah. So from here, this is how each item looks like. Right. So first items is like weapon. So weapon, as usual, you will have accuracy rating. You will have a physical damage, cold damage, lightning damage, and uh, there's other type of bad damage like fire damage. And uh, there's a critical strike multiplayer, uh, multiplier. And also, if you are wearing like a glove or armor or uh, belt, right, it's more to a defensive stuff. So you will have like a resistance. So uh, as uh, says, explanatory lightning resistance actually reduces the lightning damage from the the, the attacks that are uh, inflict to you, and having more life pool means your your character is more tankier. And if you have like a stand recovery, means uh, if the person inflict high damage to you, then your character won't be stand right. Your character can still move around quicker. So these are like a differentiation between the uh, weapons and the armor, right? So they are sort of like a tick tick. Uh, they are sort of like a scissor paper stone, right? So uh, the highest one wins. Like maybe like your highest damage win the uh, smaller skills armor something like that. So this is how it works. So the next thing right is if you want to buy, actually there's a dedicated website that you can go and buy items. And uh, if you are looking about this uh, price right, actually it's not a currency that we use like one dollar, two dollar. It's it's more like a the the in-game currency that they ask for it. So if you are buying these boots, it's actually like one chaos up and uh, this is actually a very well-maintained website that you can search and you can buy stuff. So 
uh, yeah, from from here, right? You can you can just uh, choose what you like. You can search what you like, and uh, you can sort of ask the player in game. Okay, I want to buy this item. This is what your asking price. You know, I want to offer how much. So this asking price is actually defined by a player. It's not being defined by a game. So if the player is very well experienced, he's very good at pricing certain items, right? If the player is like very new like me, I'm not very good at pricing items. So I might either uh, usually I will I will enterprise my item and uh, because I'm enterprise, if I want to buy something that is good for my character, I can't afford it because I already selling as a very uh, loose, right? I'm selling as a loss every time. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe because this is more like a decision making process, right? Uh, like how, how what is considered as a good item and how much do I price that particular thing? I, I could just uh, ask my friend who's playing maybe for a couple of years. But I can't be going to them every time I, I want something to be sold online. So I, I like, okay, maybe maybe I should try to make uh, you know something because I'm already learning machine learning and uh, you know I, I'm interested in data science. How about I apply some of the things that I learned, you know, by making this uh, piece into uh, something that can use for my own usage. So yeah, uh, before I start, I have to start thinking like, okay, what kind of method should I use? Where do I go and how do I even start, right? So this is actually what I find and I, I sort of like rephrase it myself. So the data science problem actually start from framing the problems. And after that, you go and collect the relevant data. Relevant is important because uh, sometimes you have like uh, a lot of data, but what you what's your problem is actually not related to any of the data that you collected. So even though you have two terabyte, four terabyte, whatever data, whatever amount that you have, how huge, how clean your data is, it's not relevant to the problem. They are useless to that particular problem, right? So after you have collected the relevant data and you can then need to process it, process it in the means that, you know, your collected data might be in a different format, like maybe in a JSON format, maybe in like a YML format, maybe even in like a database. So there might be a different a way that you can process the data. And also after you process it, right, you have to explore the data to, to, to do in the ways that maybe they are missing data, there are things that doesn't write, or maybe there are things that are out of place. For example, right, let's say you are collecting uh, data about fishes and suddenly you, you, you see the data about crab. Then, like, okay, this, does, this data doesn't belong to this particular set of data, right? It should be eliminated, it should be removed. And, uh, after we have processed the data, we have to analyze, okay, what kind of uh, trend or patterns that I find from this particular data? So that, you know, if uh, after doing the analysis, we know that, okay, actually this data doesn't make sense. So there might be, you know, something wrong with it, someone temper it, or maybe there are some outliers or something that, you know, making the data not very accurate. So these things is actually based on a lot of assumption or a lot of uh, background knowledge that you have to, to make it, uh, to, to be able to detect that kind of um, things that are making the data wrong or making the data not right. And after we have analyzed everything, everything looks good, then we start building the ML model. So after building it, and also we have to, you know, once we build it, we have to validate it, right? We have to know how good this particular model is. And also after we have validated it, we just uh, we can just leave it there because uh, the model might be performing bad for actually you know, like like if, if you are a data practitioner, you will encounter things that when you have a training data, when you have a testing data, they're both doing well. But when you really, really bring it into the, the live environment, there are other things that you didn't think of and it's actually performed very, very bad. You know, so, so you have to gather feedback, right? So after you have the gather feedback, you, you have a lot of feedbacks that maybe is, is all bad then you, you probably have to relook at how you frame a problem or how you collect the relevant data. So that's why I said this, this thing, right? All these things can be moved freely. Right? So uh, from the process, process, collect, uh, process collected data part, right? I, I probably might jump back to the framing the problem because after processing my collected data, I found out that, oh, actually, whatever things that are processed, right? It doesn't make sense to solve this particular uh, problem that we frame. Or after you explore it and say, oh, actually, the, this particular thing doesn't need to be solved, or you know, I found some alternative solution, 
or maybe like after analyzing, you know, uh, as, as same thing goes, you you probably after analyzing, you find something uh, in uh, interesting or something out of place, you probably go back or to to you go back to the process collection data, uh, etc. And also building model, right? Uh, sometimes you might find the input uh, slightly wrong or maybe different different input or different uh, format that you you wanted from a particular model. Then you probably go back to the process collection state and you know keep repeating. So these these bosses actually can be moved freely from one stage to another. So there's no like a waterfall system. That's why is everybody is uh, every bosses are connected to each other. So I will be mainly following these steps, right? So if you if you know there's a better way, uh, please. Uh, please feel, feel free to you know uh, talk to me in the comments. You know, uh, I'm I, I as, as I mentioned before, I'm still learning, and you know uh, these are the things that I I have come out or I have collected uh, from uh, attending courses and also you know attending the meetups and talk to people like like Ku, who is a co-founder of Data Science, right? So let's let's dig into you know framing the problems. So the first thing, right, when I when I start think about building this something, right? So I, I need to build something that can determine the price of games item. So this is my problem statement, but I have no idea what something is. I have no idea what determining is. And also, you know, what kind of game items, right? Uh, game items can be anything under the sun. So what is what are the game items? So I need to basically rephrase the problem statement to something like this, right? I have decided to use a machine learning model, right? So I, I changed my problem statement in a way that it's a built a machine learning model that can, because machine learning model can only estimate, right? It cannot determine. It can just only tell you the prediction. So it can't tell you like, okay, this machine learning model say this is $10. It must be $10. No, right? Is the machine learning model only can say, okay, this I think is $10. It might be 12, it might be 12, it might be 20, right? It is, it's only can estimate, it can't determine. Uh, so I changed that words to estimate, right? I, I build a machine learning model that can estimate the price of games item. So so the price is sort of uh, set ready, right? We, we are we are trying to we are trying to uh, estimate the price, but what about games item? So that is still vague terms to me. So I have to you know get more knowledge from uh, when we start to frame this. I need to get knowledge. Uh, in terms of the problems, right? What, what kind of categories? What what kind of set categories, etc.? Because uh, having the background knowledge actually reduces the risk of uh, wrong implementation, right? I could be doing something that is has that has no value. For example, games item, but the items can be a uh, uh, mana flask, which is not very uh, demands. We have no no really demands to to even uh, start selling right so there might be things that are not really useful to price so uh, having that background knowledge sort of helped me to you know not go to the wrong road and also i need to understand the shortcomings like uh, what are the things that makes me unable to succeed in this uh, particular project right so having the knowledge right? for example if you're trying to uh, cure cancer Cancer, cure cancer using machine learning. If you don't have the background knowledge, right, you probably won't understand what kind of uh, shortcomings that in the field of you know cancer curing. So we won't know, right? We we just randomly applying algorithms and hopefully it's, it's come out to something good, right? And uh, having the background knowledge sort of helped me to 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 validate, right? So I I have to know what and how to validate after I have done my model. How do I validate it? How do I know? This is good. How do I know this is usable? So having those background knowledges help. So it's not only for this gaming perspective. If you really talk about the actual real life projects, so having a background knowledge is really important. And uh, if you even uh, have like if you even attend some of the seminar that uh, hosted by maybe in data science SG or some other meetups, right? They they. Uh, some of the data scientists who are holding a senior position will say like, okay, if you are, if you're going to data science route, right, you you may not have to actually coming from a statistics or computer science background. Maybe you can come from uh, some other things like maybe nursing. Then you have a background knowledge of nursing and you try to learn the toolkits to apply, you know, whatever knowledge that you have into something that is data science. So. Yeah, so having a background knowledge is actually quite important to, to me to you know solve certain problems or the things that I frame. So 
uh, I list down what I know. So I know there are different categories of items and uh, each item has a price tag associated with it, right? And uh, after that, I, I list down what I don't know, right? I, I, what I don't know is how many subcategories are there and, right, and also uh, what are the price tests? Like, uh, is it going to be uh, uh, $1, $2? Is it going to be a one chaos off? Uh, what are the currency that is used? And uh, how do you even price the item? Is it like, uh, do it, is, is it going to be done like automatically? Is it going to be done like manually? Or uh, what are the things that you should consider before you can even start uh, pricing certain items? So yeah, we need to go deeper in, in terms of uh, understanding the background uh, knowledge of this particular topic. So uh, before I proceed, right, is there any questions at, uh, from the audience? That because it, um, I will be going like, you know, a little bit deeper. <laughs> Hi, Rizal. I think you are in mute, Rizal. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, so looking at the, uh, the comments, <laughs> somebody just asked, what game is this? It's Path of Exile, it is, am it's I right? Path of Exile. Yeah, it's Path of Exile. It's an ARPG game. Papa Exile should give you some commission. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think that's that's the question for now. Uh, yeah, I think you can go deeper. Yeah, feel free to go deeper. Okay, sure. Let, let's go deeper, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So uh, these are the currency that has been used in the game, right? So as you can see, there's like a lot, a lot of currency. And uh, how do you even keep track of what kind of currency is what? And uh, how do they even use for? So this is actually, you know, like a chaos of divine ops and exalted ops. They are sort of like a uh, popular, popular currency. I would say a lot of people sell for how many chaos of, uh, how many exalted, or even divine ops nowadays is a very uh, diminishing uh, popularity. So usually chaos of and exalted ops they are mainly used to trade. But uh, although I I'm referring this is as a different name, right? If you really think about it, it it really look like this. Right, we have one dollar, ten dollar, a hundred dollar. So if you really relate back to what the real life is, right, it doesn't it doesn't really differ much from what reality. Actually, the games are really created by human, right? It's not going to be uh so far fetched from what our society currently practice, right? So actually, this can be roughly translated to the you know, one dollar, ten dollar, a hundred dollar, and uh, it, it sort of make your understanding better. So how I approach this particular problem is that I try to relate back to my current life or my my, my states or in reality as far as possible. Although this is uh, games stuff, right? I don't take it as a you know it just uh, just a play thing, right? I, I want to I want to make it like I want to take it as a full flow uh, full blown projects, right? I want to make it. I want to I want to put seriousness into making something like this. So I try to relate back into, you know, real life scenarios, real life stuff. And okay, actually it makes sense, right? Okay, these are the things that are in, is, is used in real life and these are the things that are used in the game. So yeah, it sort of made me, you know, uh, tie back to the ground per se. So after that, right? And as we mentioned before, uh, this is sort of like a character screen that you can see you have weapon, armor, uh, Helmet, shield, amulets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, this is actually just one screen, right? There are there are many, many more or many, many variations. What if the person is still holding a dagger? It holds a mace, which is two-handed, right? Instead of having a shield, it's a two-handed, or maybe a character is a bow with a quiver or something like that. So I need to go deeper into what kind of categories, what kind of subcategories are there. So in terms of item categories, right, they are like helmet, glove, chest, belt, booth, weapon, etc., etc. And then there are subcategories, right? If you are body armor, there are different types. There are armor, evasion, energy, shield. And if you're weapon, there's like a physical, elemental, chaos. And there's other things like, uh, you know, uh, belt, ring, amulets, etc., etc. The list keep going on. And also each subcategories, each item, is also have different sort of rarity. Rarity in terms of base, magic, rare, and unique. So those are differentiated by uh, white, blue, yellow, and orange color associatedly. And uh, so having to know all these 
item, right? You may be thinking, oh, actually, there's a lot of categories, there are a lot of sub categories, and there's a lot of rarity. So how do you even like remember it, right? Uh, because like this is just a game, and do you even you know is it worth even remembering? But if you if I show you this, this is actually a supermarket, right? And uh, you know exactly what you want, and <laughs> you know exactly how to differentiate one product from each product. And uh, if you are not familiar with these kind of resales or or supermarket supermarket uh market right like there are different different types of category for example milk there can be uh you know non-fat milk zero fat milk uh, low fat milk it can be a chocolate flavor it can be a uh, orange flavor it can be a, a strawberry flavor there's many types right even like if you if you talk about cheese for example there are different kind of cheese uh if you're talking about uh you know ice cream cereal I could go on, right? Even even egg, they are like different colors of egg, different sizes of egg, different brand, you know, uh, different farm from different country. So th this these are the things that we we sort of do, and uh, we choose it over. We may we choose one product over another product based on the decision of the mind map that we have in our brain. Even though there's like a uh, millions millions of uh, products, we know exactly what we want to get, and also. We know what exactly uh, how to compare, and you know what's good, what's not. So if you compare this, wh whatever I mentioned like this, with this, actually what I mentioned this is very small compared to what I mentioned in here because this is uh, like a universe of items, right? Uh, and it, it, I'm from NTUC, so I usually have to deal with a lot of a lot of the uh, you know, complexity in terms of products, in terms of categories. And like for example, Milo, they have a three in one. They have you know ice. They have hot. They have cold version, hot version. There's a lot, a lot of other subcategories, and even some are substitutable to others. So this kind of complexity compared to what I am going to do is is nothing, right? It's nothing. So from here, right? Uh, from my day-to-day -day work, I I learned to appreciate that I should actually focus, like actually focus on one particular uh, categories or one particular items that uh, is uh, easy to differentiate. It's it's like a it's like a low-hanging fruit, right? If you are trying to build a machine learning stuff to a new, totally new area or totally new company, you should start by doing something that is easy to do, easy to do, and also uh, not so much. Uh, it doesn't take a very long time for you to start seeing the profits. So by doing that, your organization sort of uh, gave you. Uh, it, they, they sort of get a confidence in you to do more stuff. Or maybe your bosses like, oh, actually, what you already did like three projects. They are doing well. How about I, I give you a very big project next year or something like that. So this is this how you boost your confidence in the organization. So more and more people will find out like, okay, oh, uh, the data science team is actually doing well. They already done like three projects, right? Uh, how about I, I ask them to do one of the project for myself as well. This is how you sort of you know base your confidence. This is how you sort of. Uh, reach out to your entire organization right so uh, every now and then you will see like a lot of companies trying to try to hire data scientists to you know start their data science journey they they, they, have, they don't have the in-house team or they don't have the data science capability at the moment but they want to start so when you are in that position right and hopefully you know you you, you get to apply things that are easy to easy to do and also uh, that there, there is like a meaningful impact that has meaningful impact to the organization in the short term or long term, right? So, so I I did exactly the same as what I have uh, learned, right? I choose boots, uh, because boots, uh, in in uh common sense, I I want uh, movement speed, right? So that it can move my character faster, and uh, what I need, I probably need like a few resistance so that you know I have uh, some resistance to uh, to to counter and also I will need some uh, maximum life so that you know my character become tankier. So if you compare it to something else, the boots are like easiest uh, way to start this project to me. So I choose boots and uh, from a sub category, boots belong to the body armor category and also the rarity. Uh, there are different kind. Also, unit boots are very hard to deal with because uh, different units give you a different sort of boosting, right? So you, you might not need some units, but some units are very rare or something like that. So rare boots are easy to work with. It has a, it has a fixed requirements like, okay, movement speed, resistance, and life. So that, that's what I choose. So I, I started working on that. 
And uh, before I move over again, uh, at this point in time, anyone has any questions to, yeah, to ask? Doesn't seem like it, man. Uh, no, nah, other than uh, Charin asking for um, whether there's any GitHub repository, but I think that that question can be answered later. <laughs> yeah, I will share with you privately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I think you can uh, continue. All right, so let's let's proceed on to the deeper level of stuff. Right, so so if you remember just now, I have a problem statement about building a machine learning model that can estimate the price of gain items. And uh, after I have gone through that deeper, right, going deeper into the category, I now know that games item is actually rare boots, right? So I changed my problem statements as I learn more background knowledge about this particular topic. So um, my problem statement right now is sort of looks good in, in terms of uh, making it not vague, right? It's quite is quite strict to the point. I'm going to build a machine learning model, right? That can estimate the price of rare boots, one category and one type of things, right? I'm not going to do rare armor, rare weapon, or any other types of boots, only rare boots, right? So this is like definitive, uh, very sharp and uh, very straight to the point sort of problem statement, but something is missing. Something is missing uh, is because data science process is actually uh, science experiment. You know, you have science, science in the title or data scientist, right? You have science in the title for a reason. So science is all about uh, making experiment, right? So an experiment has to be measurable, repeatable, and uh, it has to it has to be it has to be able to tell whether you failed the experiment or you passed it, right? So <clears throat> from here, I added this thing called accuracy, right? I have to build a machine learning model that can estimate the price of rare boots with the accuracy of more than 60%. So this is what uh, I put my target to so that I have something that I can measure. If I build a machine learning model that can estimate a price with the accuracy of not more than 60%, you write this hypothesis is actually uh, fail, right? I, I, have to, I have to start over again. I have to try new things. I have to make it works again. And hopefully I, know I, I get the accuracy of more than 60%. And uh, most of the data scientists or most of the science process, right, they, they probably stop it at this point. But uh, I'm, I'm from infra background. I'm from machine learning engineer background. So I added one more thing. It's less than one minute. Because I have encounter model, which we train for like three to four hours just to produce a result. But by the time you produce a result, the, 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 the benefits of using that result has gone. Like for example, let's say I, I, want, to, I want to price this rail boost item before I sell it to someone because someone asking to buy it and it's my bother take like two hours. That, that guy's could probably just, you know, buy it from someone else. It's not gonna buy from me, right? I need that in less than a minute sort of, you know, time frame. So I added that just to make it so that, you know, I have like multiple models. I can choose whichever is less than one minute. And and here, right, we can also trade off something. So if, if, you, if you heard about Netflix, um, challenge in Netflix Kigo challenge previously they have uh, they have the winning teams who who can do more like a movie recommendation with very high accuracy but there's another team who can do with uh, slightly slightly lower accuracy but um, a lot more faster in terms of speed so it's like a trade-off thing right you can either choose the complex one or you can choose the simpler one with uh, you know lesser accuracy and uh, Netflix actually choose the one with lesser accuracy but you know faster. So yeah, that's why I added these particular things, which is less than one minute into my problem statement. And hopefully I can build something that can hit to my problem statement or, or hypothesis that I came up with. So yeah, any Q&A, anyone? If not, I will be carrying on to the next one. All right, so uh, time with us is essence, right? So maybe we quickly go over to the next slides. So if you if you go back to the, the steps, right? After I have framed the problems, I need to gather data or collect the relevant data. So collecting relevant data can be a very painful process if, if your company doesn't have a proper data infrastructure to collect it, 
So right, you, you either have to ask around or you have to collect it yourself. Like I mentioned here, you either collect it yourself or, or sometimes you're very lucky, right? Your company has stored in the tabular form as a CSV, right? You, you just pass around the CSV in terms of a USB cable or network drive or whatever, and you have the CSV to work with. And if you don't have either of those, right, you probably have to find something that is like API based. API is the application uh, programming interface. So basically, you sort of uh, consume, right? We call it, it consume the API to get some data out of it. Let's say you, you give parameter. For example, I want to get a uh, item, uh, maybe price item for an uh, a milk carton one liter in NQC, right? If they have the API, right? I just have to key in like, okay, uh, type of item, milk, right? Uh, the capacity one liter and uh, maybe brand is like Meiji, right? I, I put that into that API gateway or API API endpoint. Then endpoint will return me back the price or, 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 or expiry date or availability or something like that. So that's how the API works in a way. So I have to find these three things, right? Either I can collect, I can ask around, right? Okay, how do you price this? How do you price? What's the price of this? Then it will take a hu humongous amount of time to even collect a lot of records. And also, because there's no CSV, right? This is just a game. How do you how do you even find a data for for a game that you know? Uh, it, it doesn't make sense. No one gonna store a CSV full list of uh, the cell records. Right, and uh, so my only option here is to try find the API from the game, whether it is exposed any API or not. So uh, luckily, right, the the path exam is actually uh, very developer friendly. They have this uh, public uh, stash URL, uh, URL, like the API endpoint, for me to consume it. Right, using their URL, I will get things like you know. Uh, stash, stash type, item, you know, whether this is public or not and which league it is. And also they have like uh, official documents that I can refer to. So I, I chance upon this and like, okay, maybe I, I give you a try, right? At least I have some data to work with. So yeah, let, let's uh, get into the demo. All right, demo. Let me just reconnect it. Okay, so uh, actually, I, I'm not going to run this code because it's probably take like a, a long time. Maybe maybe I'll just run it and uh, explain it step by steps, right? So the first thing I'm just doing is just to import requests so that I can consume the, the data from the data API. So before I go, uh, the public stash API actually returns something like this. So this is actually what the return function looks like. Right, you will have a list of item JSON format is not really pretty print, so it's it's very like human, uh, not readable, right? So I have to convert this into something that is readable by human. That's sort of uh, you know uh, processing your collected data. So this is actually you know we take care that's the collected by the game itself. So I wrote a functions. So basically, you know, what I want is uh, in, in a category is armor, set category is actually a boot, right? The frame types is actually a rarity. So I want a rare. So it's zero, one, two, three. So that's yes. a rare. Hey, uh, can you, uh, is it okay if you zoom in a little bit so uh, it will be clear yeah. for some... Thank you. Sure, let me just close it. Uh, is it better now? Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit better, yeah, thanks. Yep. So yeah, the, the code itself will filter it, right? And then I get the filter boot function. I have a consolidate functions, and also I use uh, multi-processing uh, to to just to just get all the boots from the stash, right? If we go back to the previous uh, image, uh, actually there's like multiple items stashed into the stash, right? So stash is like a container where you put stuff into it, right? And uh, we are only interested in boots. So we are only interested in boots. So we, we were just refiltering for the boots. So maybe like each stash may not have a boot or maybe have one boot, two boots, uh, maybe one whole stash is full of boots. So from here, I, I sort of use the, the consume the API, right? And uh, I filter out the published stash only. So this is one of the things that uh, having a background knowledge uh, is is saved me a lot because only published stash 
has a price tag on it, right? Uh, private stash doesn't have any price tag on it, although you can query from uh, here. And uh, although this is the public stash tabs, they also include the private one also. So, and the private one doesn't have any price tag on it. So having that uh, background knowledge saved me a lot of time by filtering only the public stashes, right? So after I filter it and I run it, it will, so from here, what I'm doing is I'm going to run for maybe uh, just uh, 10 boots, right? If I run it, so I, I always like to do this, these things like, you know, when the program starts and also when the program ends and also the processing time, how long does it take? So that, you know, I, I know that, okay, uh, maybe 10 boots take this much time. Maybe how about 100 boots, etc. So from here, I collected boots, right? After I parse it, it it's, it's sort of like uh, still not very human readable. But it's sort of better already. We have the we have the attributes, right? This is like you know, uh, maximum life coexistence, and you know, etc. And also there's like an icon URL, and also they are like you know, uh, price tag, right? Price is the sixty nine regrets. So I have to convert this thing into another form, right? So that it's easy to it is virtually pleasing and also easy to look at it, right? Um, Actually, I have talked about this with uh, Ku in one of our one of our podcast session. is about data virtualization, right? Data virtualization is important, and you know how is it used and why is it important. So from here, right, this kind of text is not very readable to everybody as one glance. But if I convert into another form, which which I'm going to do now, it looks like this. So there's like a booth image, right? These are the attributes, and this is the price. So from one glance, you can see. Okay, okay, these are the booth item, right? Uh, these are the attributes, and this is the price. If you compare this against this, this is much simpler, and uh, this is really, really good to showcase to business, for example. So if you are, if you are in, in a position to present to the the business owner or or business user or or even your CEO, right? Uh, showing this kind of thing won't work, and uh, try to find something that is easy to digest and also, you know, uh, give you more information at one glance. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good practice to, to do it. And, you know, uh, doing this might give you uh, a bonus or something in that, you, you know, instead of showing like, okay, actually I, I get this data out, but, you know, I, I convert into something that is look like this. It, it's better to, to even show it that way. And it's also good for you so that you can, so, okay, I'm not retrieving. Let's say some sometimes like you retrieve boots and suddenly show one armor. Okay, well, actually I'm not retrieving, I'm retrieving something wrong, right? So I need to go back to my fatal steps, which is this one. I, I need to refine it a little bit. Then uh, I come back and, you know, uh, look at the virtualization again. So this is sort of like, you know, repeating process. Like I mentioned before, you can always go back to the, the previous steps or the step before. So after that, I need to process the collected data, right? So this kind of thing won't work for uh, machine learning models because machine learning models will mainly work with the tabular data. So I need to convert these attributes into a tabular format, which I'm going to do now, right? So from here, so I have uh, compressed all this information into a tabular format, right? Each attributes will have uh, each attribute actually one occupants in the list. And as you notice, right, uh, every items actually slightly different. Some of them has uh, six or seven uh, items. Some of them has only three. Some of them has only two, right? Uh, so I can't just uh, feed this into the model because they are different sizes, and uh, you know, machine learning model actually needs to have uh, different uh, same same column size and also the same same length of things. So I have to extract all this information, right? Like like core resistance from that text and uh, lightning resistance from that text. So from here, I have write a code, right? And if you are wondering the prices, right? There's a prices of different currency, like 1.5 EXA, 40 chaos, you know, two chaos, one chaos, etc. So how are these converted to each and everywhere is, as I mentioned before, the Power of Excel is very developer friendly and there's a lot of community developed websites. So if you go to this kind of particular website, they keep track of each items and their currency value 
in the last seven day. So for example, from here, I know that this particular chaos odds is actually going up, right? And this particular item is actually going down. And this is actually going down and this is actually stagnant. So from here, they have shown you every single thing that are uh, that you need to do, right? If you ever want to exchange something, one currency to another currency, it's, it's sort of like a stock exchange, right? They, they, they sort of do this for the game, right? For a game. So this kind of information that you can see from here, you sort of know the conversion rate, right? From, uh, you know, uh, 22.9K, you get this kind of mirror of Cassandra and uh, all this thing. And uh, this is actually a community website, right? And if you really want to trade something, they also have the official site. That is, uh, that is like this, right? I want, I want, uh, you know, what I want is chaos op. You know, what I have is exotic ops, and I can search for it. And uh, yeah, these are the these are the website dedicated for just trading the currency. So from here, I can extract all this information and also convert convert the the price category, uh, price uh, currency because. We have to have a standard across the entire field, right? Like price column have to have a standard standard of units of measurement to be able to predict something good. So from here, I have the ratio. I get it from the website that I mentioned previously, right? And uh, from here, I need to process the tax, right? I, I'm not interested in the, the buyout or I'm not interested in the price. I'm only interested in the number and also the type of the currency so that I can convert them. So I have the ratio, uh, dictionary here i replace them you know i try to convert all this into a float right if because chaos is like a base currency like i mentioned previously it's like a one dollar coin so i convert all this into chaos so i have the converted price whereby i float the number in i try to multiply with the ratio that i have listed here so after that i have this kind right so i have i have uh i have a function or method that to extract the number so that uh, from, from this kind of text, like 51 maximum life, I will just extract it like 51 from, from that particular thing. So from here, I applied a pen like this. And uh, after I have done all this, we can use the good old friends pandas to, to list down into something like this. So, so I have uh, converted something that is like this into a more pleasing for visual, but slightly useless to the data science model. But if I, I convert that again into something that is usable by our data science model, which is like this, right? This is actually a data cleaning or data wrangling sort of steps that you have to go through, right? A machine learning is actually not just, uh, you know, you try to build model and that's it. You have to, you have to build from from the start right from the raw data how do you even build something that is usable to your model so after that i save it into my csv csv file and also i, I start to uh, explore my process data so this this is actually my process data right i have to start exploring it and see whether is there any outliers is there anything wrong with my data so after I process it, right, I, I have a function to plot the correlation for, uh, it is a very simple one that you use uh, Seaborn library, right, uh, that, that can give you the correlation of uh, each items and their respective uh, stuff. So uh, from here, right, surprisingly, uh, movement speed is actually not very relevant to the price. So So from here, you know something wrong, right, because the, the booth is more important steps. The most important step for or having a pair of boots is you have to have a movement speed. So if your movement speed is high, your price should go up, right? But from here, you can see the price is actually low for having a movement speed high up. It doesn't really make sense, right? So what I did, I tried to plot a pair plot to see is there any uh, outliers or anything that is uh, making this... Uh, making our assumption wrong, right? Uh, I would expect a movement speed to be like super, super red instead of, you know, having a blue. So now it's uh, plotting the pair plot. Bear with me, the Google is clear connecting. So after I, I have done the pair plot, a lot of plots seems normal to me, except the, 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 the price and the movement speed. So if you notice, right, there are, there are things that is, very high, highly pricey. 
Oh, because this is uh, okay. Because I only retrieve the ten records. But yeah, if if we if we notice if we retrieve like a uh, hundreds, then you probably see more. So let's let's retrieve like a hundred. Okay, so we only retrieve ten, so you you don't uh, see a lot of uh, you don't see a lot of trends from the data because it's just a uh, ten records. Others like uh, ten uh, hundred records, you still won't see like a, a very accurate portray of the data. So the more data you have, the the better to actually plot it out and you know see it that because what we are seeing might the data that we are seeing might be biased based on the hundred records that I pull out. So the code is still running. Uh, yeah, so I, when we, sir, yeah, when we are, yeah, when we are running this, maybe I will take some of the, some of the item. As uh, you know, anybody asks uh, any games? Oh, everyone asks about the, the games. <laughs> the name of the game, yes. The name of the games. It's Path of Exile. Uh, sunset. Uh, there's other other viewers. All right. So I think uh, I I. I uh, I think we do have uh, a number of uh, you know uh, people who uh, you know who are beginning in uh, you know doing data science work and whatnot. So this interface that you are currently using, I guess uh, uh, perhaps you might want to highlight this interface that you are using because everyone uh, perhaps it's it, they are familiar with you know the Python shell, uh, even Jupyter notebook perhaps. But what is this? Mm. Oh, yeah. sure, sure. So, so actually, if you are familiar with Jupyter Notebook, right? Jupyter Notebook is actually like a platform that you know let you run Python and R code and HTML code on on the same platform, and you can also see the result at the same time, right? But it runs on your local machine, right? So if you are if you don't have like a GCP or if you don't have like a, a GPU on your laptop, if you want to do some machine learning trainings or data science or deep learning training, you probably take a long time to even process it. But so thanks to Google, right, uh, for sponsoring, you know, uh, platform and also giving us a free access to to this a very cool, very cool, very uh, use useful platform for us to for data science data scientists or data scientists wanna be to play around without having to invest so much in GC uh, the GPU GPU in the sense that graphic comp uh, processing unit. So I'm I'm a, I'm a gamer. I have a GPU, but you know not everyone is a gamer, so you probably won't have a GPU. But if you want to hop onto the GPU capability, you can use this uh, Google Collapse. So if you just uh, Google Collapse, right? It's, it's free, by the way. If it's free, and if you if you ever want if you ever need more processing power or um, a better GPU, you can always uh, sign up for a paid version, which is like a de dedicated GPU system or whatnot, right? So in, in order to use this uh, notebook, right? What you need is a Google account, right? You have to have a Google account to use Google product, right? Yeah, so you you have to have a Google account. Then then uh, what you can do, right? You can just start creating a new notebook from here. The the one good thing about this is actually this is hosted directly to your Google Drive. So when you when I save this, right? I'm saving this. It doesn't save to my 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 machine. It's saved to my Google Drive. So if if I use this machine, I work on something. Then if I go to my friend house, I use their their machine. I can still able to assess the same information or same runtime, or, or maybe same notebook as I I typed previously. So from yeah. here, right? Yeah. And and the, the another good thing about this is you don't have to install a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things like for example import TensorFlow, they are already here. I mean like they they already install it for you. So if you like, uh, I'm not sure about TensorFlow two, right? When I when I when I work when I work with TensorFlow like well, one point six or one point seven previously, uh, I have to I have to get like a GPU driver version, like the, the we call it the CUDA driver that matches the version of TensorFlow that you want to install. So if you if you install a different version, your TensorFlow doesn't work. The backend doesn't work for the GPU. So like from here, they already install everything for you, and you can also choose the runtime, which is 
whether you want a GPU and there's a TPU. TPU is a tensor processing unit. It's only native to Google application, right? So if you ever do this uh, tensor sort of uh, operation, using TPU is slightly faster than a GPU. But yeah, you can always choose a GPU which is you know free for a certain usage. And uh, yeah, if you're going to buy a GPU, it probably costs you like uh, 10,000 or 1,000 or you know, 1.5. But you know, here Google is giving you free to try it. And thanks Google for, for you know, giving this available for <laughs> so, us. So not only Google is hosting this uh, <laughs> this uh, meetup sharing, but also the, the, the platform that you're using happens to be from Google. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I know that uh, it's a good resource for uh, those people who might not have easy access to good computing power, GPU computing power to actually utilize this platform to, you know, do some of their, um, what do you call it, basic uh, data science. Analytic, yeah. Thing. Yeah, workflows. Yeah, yeah. And, so, so yeah. And the good, the good thing is, right, it's, it's stay with you, right? You, you, it's stiff in your Google Drive. So it won't go anywhere. And if you want to share with your friends, right, you can always, you know, uh, maybe you know your friends is a data scientist, right? I, I mean, you want to share. Uh, maybe I, I want to share this with Ku, right? Uh, yeah. Then uh, I can I can share with someone else. Yeah. So that they can just jump in. They can have you fix your code. They can have you review what you write instead of you know having your laptop. I say, oh, ask your friends over. And with now, right, with COVID, right, your friends probably won't be able to. Or be so keen to come to your house and like have you do stuff. So this is very easy that like, you can share stuff as well. Yeah. So so just yeah. not what we have seen. Um, thus far is you basically showcasing um, the data mining steps if, yep. you know extracting a, a minuscule version of an ETL workflow uh, yep. where you yep. ex extract this data from the path of exiles public API and then you know uh, formatting it into a data frame so uh, I believe the the, the last uh, part where you left off is on the multivariate analysis of uh, yes, so yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so so I'm I'm here try to try to find out right. Go, I I, I will I will pretty much so that the movement speed should be the should be you know very red in terms of importantness, right? Boots is is mainly for movement speed. So uh, from here the data that I see is something wrong with my data because movement speed is not the top most important stuff. So after I I have plotted out, right, uh, actually I saw there's some outliers as you can see, that is like one point so far ahead from everybody else. Is very equally spread out like this, All right? So what I can do, right? I can uh, from here, right, about about five thousand. There's nothing. I, I could just use four thousand as well, since there's nothing, right? So I will just use anything that is less than five thousand. I will just discard for now, which is only one item, right? It might be someone who just doesn't want to sell his stuff, so that he will just price it to the max, right? And uh, hopefully, no one buys his stuff, something like that. So yeah, and uh, so after I removed it, I tried to plot the the pair plot again. Yeah, hopefully it's, it's fast. Close it and uh, it's running. Okay. Okay. So so after I removed it, right? There's not not much of outlier, but there are there are still some outliers here, but I think that's that's okay. So let's let's uh, plot this. And yes, after we remove that particular outliers, you will see the movement speed has the highest importantness in the booth. So now we can roughly uh, know that our data is slightly correct, like more correct than what it has previously, just by removing this one outlier. So, so as you can see, right, virtualization sort of gives you very quick glance, right? I don't even have to look through every single record. I know that from my uh, background knowledge, from my understanding, I strictly know, okay, uh, why, why the movement speed is not the most important because it's very natural, right? Based on this color, I can see actually zero, zero is like, you know, neutral. And uh, the more, the, the higher the value is, the more important it is. So after I remove that particular outliers, my movement speed is go up. So the, the data looks a bit uh, normal to me, but 
if you really want to go it deeper, right, there are still some outliers that you can see, right? Slight, like I, I would, it really depends on how you define outliers and where you put your threshold. And uh, it, like, uh, as, I, as I tell you before, there's only 100 records in this particular session. So uh, you are just uh, getting a sample of hundreds out of uh, millions of items there is. So whatever we deem uh, uh, outliers here might not be might not be the actual outliers, right? Because this is very local, very native to the hundred records that we we pull out. But so so after that, right? I, I try to remove that to uh, one one uh, this this one thing as well just to make it look nice. Because from what I see, the the life is not that important. So I, I would I would I would think because it, it depends on the player preference. Some player uh, uh prefer higher speed you no know, character than uh tanky character, but I I like to have a more tankier character with a slightly slower slower pace. So it really depends on the player perspective and uh all these things influence the the outcomes of all these prizes, right? Because everything is not being fixed, it's all defined by players. So if the players value more uh, movement speed stuff and uh, the movement speed stuff will be higher, highly, highly valuable. So after that, right, I, I have plot the same. So the, the things doesn't change even if I remove that one uh, one outlier per se to, to, to the plot, right? I have plotted out, it doesn't really change that much to our, our graph. So I can simply say that, okay, maybe this is the time that we can uh, move over the next step. But uh, Bear in mind that we only have 100 records, right? So uh, when you want to train uh, your model, right, you probably need more uh, data. But uh, let's let's get ahead with this because uh, we don't have time to retrieve like a thousand and hundred thousands of records. So so after we have done all this uh, data exploration, right, I, I, I'm confident that whatever the data that I have is more like accurate, I'm ready to move over to the, the model building steps. So model building, like uh, actually, like a lot of people say, the data science is just like uh, dot fit and you know uh, dot predicts, then uh, it's done, right? And uh, all you have to do is just a uh, random forest it and everything else. But uh, I beg to differ because uh, Scikit Learn has a very good, uh, how do I say this? Very good uh, guide or very good mind map or flow charts. You you would say to to choose which algorithm better suited for your your. Uh, uh, your model or your your problems, right? So from here you start, and uh, if you are if you are having you know less than fifty sample, right? You have to get more data because uh, it doesn't work, right? If you are more than fifty sample, and uh, you you try to go to next steps, right? Whether we are predicting a category or predicting a quantity, so we are predicting a quantity, so we will go to no route from here, right? And uh, from here, right? Are you predicting a quantity? Yes, I'm predicting a quantity. So from here, I move over to this yes route. So from here, right, you will say, okay, are you less than 10K sample? Say, yeah, I'm less than 10K sample, right? And uh, a few features should be important. What does it mean, right? It means we have built these uh, features, which is uh, maximum life, resistance, coal, fire, lightning, and uh, chaos, and the movement speed, right? Are they important or uh, or some of them is more important over others or some of them can be discarded. Like for example, uh, minimum, uh, maximum life is not really important at all. I can discard it, I can discuss it. So if you say yes, you can try a lasso or elastic net. If you say no, uh, you can try a read regression or SVN. So if either of those are not working, right, you can move over to the example regressor or the, the SBR. So like this is a very good uh, cheat sheet that you can always refer to. It doesn't always give you the best result, but it sort of gives you like a guide that you can always refer to, and uh, you don't get lost in uh, you know ML wall because everybody threw around okay SGD, uh, standard uh, you know a standard regressor or assembler model or random forest, and then you will get lost in like oh what kind of model do I use? So if, if you if you're just starting out, if you're just starting out and uh, you want to want to know what kind of model that you should use, uh, you can always refer to this cheat sheet just. Just go through the arrow and you sort of find your own uh, 
the one the one model or two model that works for your problems, right? So from here, we we just run one through and uh, we are start with the read regression. So yeah, I I will use the linear regression and uh, see how my model perform, right? So before we we try this, right? I need to split my columns into A's and Y. So let's uh, quickly get my data show out so it's easier to see. Right, so my data looks like this. I have a maximum light column, co-resistant, light resistant, fire, chaos, movement speed, and price. So the price are actually converted price from K, uh, yeah, from other currency into a chaos of currency. And uh, from here, right, what we want in the machine learning model, what we want is uh, we call this is the feature columns, like uh, one. The, the column that you want to predict is called target or label column, right? So what we want to do is we move that label column separately. We call it Y. And uh, we move all these things. We call it X, right? So if you imagine from X is like from here to here, and uh, this is Y, right? So from here, we use this uh, very nice uh, toolkit from uh, Scikit, uh, Scikit Learn. There is a train test split. I think uh, if you if you are just new or if you are if you know about this right, this is basically splitting my hundred records into uh, seventy seven and uh, thirty two or something like that records. Um, yeah, seventy thirty in a way like so I can define a test size of thirty uh, percent. So so what it's going to do is from a hundred records, it's going to use seventy records to train and uh, 30 records to test it. So why do you test it? Like I, I, after I train a model, right? I have to I have to validate whether my model is performing well or not. So uh, yeah, from here, right? We, we split into it and I use a linear regression model to, to fit and uh, try to get a score. I get an R square value of 0 0.2. So uh, this is, it doesn't really translate into uh, accuracy per se. But uh, it sort of gave you like R square. If you are from math background, uh, linear regression R square value is the good net of fit, right? How well your 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 regression line fit to the data point that you have. So after that, right, I I, I try to I try to compare from the actual price versus prediction and see how it comes up. So our prediction for for first round is actually uh, the actual price 150, right? The prediction 130. So the the first second round is actual price is 40, but the prediction 120. So and uh, some of them is actually uh, you know showing as minus. So why why does this so right? Uh, I I will show you in the more slides previously, but uh, what what we are trying to do right? We are try trying to uh, throw in random features that we can think of to uh, to predict a price, but uh, what we have come up with, like this maximum core resistance, light resistance, chaos resistance, and movement speed, might not be the considering factor for the price. So, and and uh, what what we what we can say, right? There might be more to it than these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six feature that we have come up with. We might need to be creative and come out something that is uh, more relatable or more, more dominant for the price tag, right? So something like a BMI. So if, if I give you like a weight and height and uh, ask you like, okay, try to calculate the person healthiness using the weight and height, right? And you you you, you just keep weight column and height column and try to predict the, the, the healthiness or the, the fitness, right? You, you might have a very tough time trying to come up with something that is usable. But after you apply the, the BMI formula, you sort of have a category in, okay, if your BMI value fall into this particular thing, then uh, yeah, you, you are like obese or you are like, you know, uh, mildly obese or you are like healthy. So this kind of uh, formula or coming up with that kind of uh, feature is called uh, feature engineering. That one of the steps that uh, data scientists does after they have done all the processing, getting everything, then they will do uh, feature processing or feature engineering to be able to condense the information or you know convert all this information into something that is usable and uh, more dominant or uh, or more more relatable to the price tag so from here it is it's sort of like performing like some of them performing not bad right like this uh, the price is uh, 5 actually pretty like you know 8 and uh, uh, all these that like, this kind of thing is performing very bad yeah so 
uh, uh, okay. So, seems yeah. like uh, we're moving back to the slides, is it? No, no, no I see. Yeah, we, we can we can go. Uh, yeah. So I I, I guess um. So, so assuming that you mm. once satisfied with the model, uh, uh, are you? Do you eventually move into deployment of the model or something? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So, so yeah. Let us move in, move on to the next steps, right? So from here, what I do is I I try to uh, test my model, right? Let's say my I have a boobs, right? That is uh, uh that has the eighty maximum life, twenty five core resistance, twenty five uh, lightning fire, zero QL resistance, and movement speed. So I use this uh attributes or, or my, my item attributes to, to predict something. So what my model says is I should sell it for 159 chaos op. So if I have this item, right, this is something that I should price on. So 150 is like or one exhausted or something like that. So there you go. This is like, you know, a very basic model that uh, can use to predict. It doesn't work all the time. It, 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 do, it do screw up some of the way. It is mainly because we didn't do uh, enough data uh, feature engineering, or maybe we don't have enough data to even begin with, right? We are only have, using 100 records from here. So let's quickly go back to the the slides the remaining slides i will just uh, run through this one right so these are the findings that i have right also i, I name it as good thing my share but although uh, i say like why did i fail to to predict something that is because if you if you if you recall my problem statements is i need to have a model that has uh, more than 60 percent accuracy right if, if i don't have it then uh, why do i fail so uh, after I, I have done a lot of uh, testing, you know, I, I try to run with my, my local machine. I try to run multiple machines and see that oh, the stash API actually has a limitation, right? Uh, assessing not more than a certain number of stash at the same time is to prevent uh, denial or service attack to the game server. So every time I, I query it, right, they, they, they record my IP address. And if I query in too fast, they will block my IP. So and I cannot get any information from the stash anymore. And uh, the stash API send the oldest data first. So what happened is whatever data that we retrieve might be updated already. So people might be moving on, getting a new set of items, or they probably move over to, you know, like, like different situation call for different price up, right? So when the COVID situation comes, you probably have a lot of uh, tissue paper run out. And uh, yeah, this kind of thing happened in the game as well. So some, some uh, streamer or some popular gamers decided to, you know, use that particular items. So everyone tried to buy it and uh, the item price will go up. And uh, so the labels that we are using right now is solely reliance on the ability of the player that, you know, that price that item, right? So some of, some of the things that we price, uh, we, we predict too high, but the price actually sell very low. It may be because the player is not very uh, aware of the item price, the actual price like me. So I, I probably say is that, very, very cheap compared to what it should be really selling, right? So this is these are the limitations that we have when I work with something that, uh, you know, has the no proper documentation. There's no, uh, uh, there's, there's, there's no, you know, a guide to, to where to even start, right? Those are the limitations that I face. So, and uh, there's another things that I can do where it's like, I can improve on by, you know, having the more background knowledge uh, to build more features, uh, you know, I have to try out the other model that performed the prediction test. So it, although the psychic learn diagram showed me that I show you the linear regression, right? I, there's no points. There's, there's nothing stopping me from trying things that are like random forest or decision tree, right? It might be uh, better suited for the task that I have. Also, I need to find out the hidden feature, something like, you know, when this was been uh, uh, put into the stage, right? So if if there is a there's a peak in the game, uh, in the, the period, right? Like for example, now it's COVID, so everybody everyone have uh, free time. They might start to play games, and like the more players are playing, the 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 economies will be thriving, right? The more player want to buy stuff, and the higher the price will be. So I have to find out features something like this, and uh, so all these features actually, you know, uh, if you use models like uh. Uh, C MCMC like Marty Karlov uh, Markov chain model, then uh, all these features are actually you know cater into the model building itself. So yeah, th th there's like a lot of other ways that you can try out, you can improve on, and uh, you can do. And uh, this very nice code that I I got or I hear it after I have uh, I have done uh, I I've, I've done an episode with the uh, Sharin. So Sharin is a very uh, good 
data scientist that I, I, I met him through a podcast session that we, we did it uh, not too long ago. Then he told me that, okay, data science job, right, is not to apply dog feet on the data, right? And he or she is there to find out the reason and fix the issue when the dog feet doesn't produce a desired result. That what, what I did just now, right, I, I have did, I have built a model. I have, I have tried every single thing that I list out. I do, I do explore data. I do process data. I do a visualization. I do analysis. I try to build a model by using a dog fit method, right? But it doesn't produce the desirable outcomes. So I need to know what to do. I need to know why the reason is not, you know, why, why this, this model doesn't perform and how do I solve it? So like, I really like the, 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 the code that he, 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 he show us or he tell us in the podcast itself. So I, I, I decided to put that on my slides, right? I hope this is useful for uh, people who are listening or, you know, viewing this uh, sharing session as well, right? If you, if you, if you really want to uh, listen to his entire podcast, uh, I, will, I will share my podcast link to you guys so that, you know, you can find some hidden gems like this in our, our podcast session, right? So yeah, th this is like a future plan. So how do I mitigate the, the things or how do I do the future plan? So uh, currently I'm reading API directly from my, my notebook, right? So what I should have done or what I could be doing in the next uh, next round is I, I use API, retrieve it, and uh, I will store it into a database, right? And uh, because every time I store, maybe maybe I can I can process 200 stats, right? And uh, they will block my IP for a while, then I can start again. So uh, when I start the next time, I don't have to start from the start, right? I will just keep indexing it into a database. So from that database, right, I can just query it using my notebook, right? Whatever Jupyter notebooks or the Colette notebooks that you, you desire. So you connect the database, use a notebook, right? Then you expose it as an API for, for a person or for me or for personal use or for your friends to use it. So after you have done the API endpoint, right? You should have a web interface for feedback so and like let's say you have a prediction for the model right your your audience or your user should be able to give you feedback like whether you're pricing too low too high or maybe it just writes right so so that you know your model performance in real life not just uh, testing it right we we do have a testing thing but not just testing this so yeah th this is actually uh, extra content that i have right some food for thoughts uh, when I when I just started data science journey, I have encountered a lot of this, right? Uh, becoming a data scientist in you know, X weeks boot camps, right? And uh, surprisingly, a lot of people attend these kind of boot camps, and uh, uh, they, they they are very disheartened that after they have done the boot camp, they can't get a position in data science, or 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 maybe you know not not a position that they want it to be. So if if I if I if I give you a very honest opinion, right? Uh, if if I change this slightly into this, right, so look like data scientists, like after looking at this, they're like, am I a joke to you? I spent uh, you know four years uh, grad degree, two years masters, and maybe four to five more years of PhD, and like you can do it in like weeks. What what are you trying to say, right? So if if I put it into perspective, if if I have to run a workshop that has like a, becoming a medical doctor in uh, X week boot camps, right? Uh, and you want, uh, maybe I want through the bootcamp, right? And uh, I have a certificate of uh, completion of these bootcamps. And uh, how confident are you? Or if you're sick, right, will you come to me? Or you come to a something or someone who, who has the, who has the, you know, uh, proper training, maybe two to three years of uh, medical school training. I don't know. So so this is the perspective. Or uh, maybe if you can do a miracle, maybe you are a genius. You can learn everything there is to learn in a couple of weeks, right? Uh, if you are not uh, very, uh, like a genius level or uh, you know intelligence, but I, I don't think we can learn everything there is to become a data scientist in like a couple of weeks, right? So uh, the the statement should be right is is, is more like uh, like uh, if you are, if you're going to talk about okay like, the medical doctors are you know life and death situation, uh, if you do something wrong, uh, you can kill a person, like so I, I want to share a project that I did. So uh, I back in AI Singapore, I did a project is about uh. Uh, removing tumor in a person uh, body, right? So, so this is like X-ray chest, and imagine there's a tumor, tumor here, and I have to use a machine learning model to predict the shortest or the pain, painless way to remove that, uh, that tumor out of a human body. So let's say, right, if I'm a data scientist and I'm not sure what I'm doing, 
And uh, if 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 I'm attached to this kind of project and I implement it and it went live and a lot of people uh, may have you know uh, gotten a lot of uh, discomfort and also even uh, death in a certain situations. So uh, don't think like you know uh, doing data science work is not a life and death situation. There might be a situation you will be putting in that uh, has to deal with the life and death situation. So yes, that, that's what I want to highlight. And uh, another things that I want to highlight. Uh, so so uh, I actually rephrase the, the the things right. It's like you have you can learn data science toolkit in uh, x amount of bootcamp, like x amount of weeks in bootcamp. So so what you can do right, you can learn the toolkits, you can learn TensorFlow, you can learn Scikit-Learn, you can learn a lot of other things. You can learn like what is EDA, how to do EDA, etc. But in order to become a data scientist, you need much more than uh, learning a toolkit. That's that's what I I personally face, and also yeah, that's what I want to uh, what do I want to share with you guys as well. So the next things that I do, right? The next thing that I, I encounter is like every time I want to meet up groups, I, I hear some someone says like machine learning is nothing just more than uh, throwing things at the wall and see what sticks in it, and and uh, and the other, other things like machine learning is just uh, train to split and uh, dot fit to the model. So so after I hear it, because I, I'm I'm a, I'm a very uh, Enthusiastic about data science and machine learning and AI, so it is it's very uh, offensive to me to hear this kind of thing. If, if I give you a perspective, right, how how a normal person will react? It's like, uh, if if I have to say, painting is nothing more than drawing lines at the canvas and see what appears. So it doesn't make sense to call painters, uh, you know, any and does it, uh, you know, uh, make sense to give any credits to the painters uh, who draw lines at the canvas and see what appears, right? So there's always the uh, color theory. There's other things that you you have to learn in order to in order to create something nice, something meaningful, or something amazing to be able to you know able to sell or become famous or something. And uh, the next things that I, I can think of, right, is like cooking is just uh, putting things in a pot and you know, heating it up. Right, we all know that doesn't work, right? So you have to, you know, you have to know how to what to put, what kind of ingredient to put, and uh, when to put it, and also you know what kind of uh, uh, you know, spices to put. You know how much how much water you have to put in, how much heat you have to put in. So so all these things are actually required that are not really uh, transparent to a, a outsider. But you know, when you are in the field, like even in data scientists, all those you just do. Uh, maybe like dot fit or whatever, right? There, there are things that you know, hyperparameter tuning. There are things like feature engineering. There are things like processing. There are things like you know, you have to learn background information before you can even start doing something great. So yeah, that, that's what I want to uh, share as well. So if you ever see someone uh, who say these kind of things, right? Uh, don't be discouraged. They, they they have no idea what they're saying. And uh, if if you if you really 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 cannot comfort, right? You can use this line. So yeah, if 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 they say yeah, this is right. <coughs> Then I ask them to cook something for you. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. So yeah, uh, just now I, I talk about the podcast that we have, right? So this is the podcast that uh, I'm running together with uh, Ku. Ku is the co-founder of Data Science SG, right? So uh, we we invite people from uh, Singapore, people from uh, Asia region, like people who has gone through the same journey as you, or who has already, you know, working as a data scientist, lead data scientist, and who is making progress in their career. We invite them in, you know, we ask them questions, we ask them how how their journey and you know what they did to achieve that particular position. So if you ever want to, you know, uh, listen to something that is uh, easy to digest and also that's uh, local to our, you know, Singapore or the, the Asian market, you can always tune into that. And uh, yeah. Please feel free to subscribe and uh, share with your friends if you find this is meaningful. And we put a lot, a lot of work into this, and hopefully this is something that useful to you as well, right? So right. Uh, with the, yeah, with this, I will end my session, right? If you have any questions, you can always talk to me from LinkedIn. Uh, you can always email me, and uh, you can always find me or uh, in person as well. Yep. Thank you. All right. Great. So I guess let me see if there are any questions from the audience. Anybody wants to ask any question? So uh, I think I think it's 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 great. Uh, this this session is great. Um, you know, thanks for sharing. Uh, I think it's especially relevant for these people who are trying to get a kickstart as to you know how to you know further bolster their data science skill sets once you know perhaps they move on from their bootcamp or once they have you know once they have learned the fundamentals from. Uh, their undergraduate course, where, wherever they have learned their foundations from. 
so uh, are there any data? So I know the, the, the data set that's relevant for today is the Path of Exile public stash API, but do you know yeah. of any other data set repository that perhaps people could resort to to further you know, train their data mining or data cleaning skills or and then yeah. bring machine models? Uh, I mean, you, you could always try like Kaggle, right? If you if you want to mm. learn about other other modules or other topics, right? There's a lot of uh, public API, and also if you are if you are in Singapore and you want to tap on the government data, there's a uh, uh, data.sg, right? Mm. It, uh, that uh, Singapore governments uh, release some of the data that you know, like public housing. There's some someone I know actually did uh, you know uh, HDB prediction, for example. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think, uh, uh, yeah, the title of the SG and Kaggle, uh, I think those are some of the uh, more mainstream sources of data. I know there are some other sources of data, um, you know, that that uh, because because data coming from Kaggle or the title of the SG, uh, you know, can be overly used by people. So perhaps I think, you know, the API data sources from, you know, APIs will be more unconventional and therefore it will be, much more interesting. So I guess that's why you tap on to such yeah. sources. And, and if you are interested in API, there's like a very good API called onemap.sg in Singapore context. So you can you can get a lot of information out of the, you know, Singapore uh, locations, yeah. HDB, the district, yeah. data, a lot of data, yeah, from onemap.sg. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, uh, so I guess if there are, let, let's just, yeah, I think there are no more questions from the audience. Well, if you have any questions, uh, as Tuya have mentioned, you can, uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, direct your queries to Tuya's uh, LinkedIn profile. All right, I'm sure he'll be happy to, uh, to answer your queries and converse with you. All right, um, uh, well, if, if there's no further questions, all right, um, I guess that's it. All right, um, that's uh, for from us, Data Science SG. All right, do do remember to like our Facebook page, all right, Data Science SG, or, you know, join our meetup page, uh, just search Data Science SG, all right. Um, yeah, uh, add, add to ya on LinkedIn and listen to the podcast that, you know, that he has, all right. I'm sure that he has uh, a lot of uh, very interesting guests, you know, they have a lot of interesting to say, so, um with that all right uh any parting words to you uh thank you so much everyone to you know stay until the end of the session i really appreciate you know spending your time uh spending it on listening to what i have shared to you you could be anywhere in the world and doing anything else in this uh, situation but you s decide to spend one and a half hour time with us so thank you so much for that and uh thank you so much data science sg for hosting this kind of uh, community talks it's really i learned a lot from you know when i was studying into data science i learned a lot from you know your meetups try to learn things from you know, try, try to try to you know be a data scientist or try to try to learn things from uh, follow data scientists or the community members there is, and also not forgetting Google, you know, uh, for for hosting us here and also giving us the the collapse notebooks. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Joey. All right, and uh, Justin. So I know uh, they they have worked hard to help us set up. And speaking of you know uh, us trying to build a community here. We do have uh, 20, uh, 21st, 21st of July, all right? We do, uh, that's our next session. Uh, for the next session, uh, I think this will also be relevant for uh, those of you who are trying to get into the field of data science or data analytics. Uh, you know, it, and this is especially re relevant to those who are not in the scene at all and they would like to do a mid-career trans trans uh, transition. I think this will be very relevant for you. And this is just for July, all right? We do have uh, lineups, all right, for the months to come. So uh, do like our Facebook page, do, do join our meetup group, and yeah, stay tuned. All right, with that, thank you very much to all those who have tuned, all right? Uh, stay safe, all right? Um, yeah, uh, stay safe, even though, you know, uh, phase two, it's phase two and all. But yeah, do, do, do stay vigilant, uh, meet your due diligence. All right, with that, hey, thank you very much to you. All right. No problem. Uh, Always happy a, to be here. All right. Good to see you again. All right. Have a good uh, rest of the week. All right. The same to you guys. Thank you, Thank you very much. Signing off. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.